First, I wanna just wish everybody well. I hope you're all safe um, during these uh, very difficult times. Um, I usually like to be uh, presenting in person. As you know, we are uh, using a medium that is all about having a direct relationship with the object. And I also like to have direct relationships with the people that I'm speaking to. So this is new for me. Um, welcome. Um, to give you a little bit of a background on myself uh, and also uh, my, my company. Um, I am an industrial designer by trade, uh, studied at the University of Cincinnati, um, somehow made it to California um, from Cincinnati. And uh, I met my brother and my sister who are also industrial designers. So there's a, a family of us um, who all designed together. So we actually have a good time um, and um, give you a little bit of background on the company. So we're, we're based in San Francisco, uh, beautiful San Francisco. Um, it is a place that I visited first time 1989 and I ended up moving here in 1990. Uh, and um, in 1993 is when I started my business. Um, the business started uh, really as an endeavor that, that um, I had no idea if I was going to be uh, starting my own business. Um, I just have a passion for uh, design and it was um, having uh, some experience working with other industrial design firms in the area and also in Southern California that I one day started to uh, tinker with my own uh, personal design project. And it was something that led me to today. Um, I really never knew that I was gonna start a business and uh, it was until later that I uh, worked on a, on a new project that it got me there. So this is our studio. Um, this is actually a, a, a structure that's built within a fairly large warehouse space that we, we purchased a few years back. Uh, it represents as well. Um, we are a total of about 30 design, uh, excuse me, 30, uh, 35 uh, folks working in many different levels in design, uh, administrative, customer service, and of course, um, I have a team of assembly uh, folks that are also, um, you know, building and shipping lamps every day. Um, we're a global brand now. Um, about five years ago, we started a, a European uh, business, and now we are selling across uh, all over the world: um, Japan, Canada, Mexico, um, Australia, and it's it's been uh, an amazing sort of journey. I want to just kind of speak a little bit about, um, so my, my father was actually a classically trained um, guitarist, Spanish guitar, but he also uh, became a, uh, a civil engineer. And thus, you know, we, have, we got a lot of influence from him. We are always very interested in just um, his hobbies, which were remote control, flying remote control airplanes, and um, many other uh, things that, that really just influenced us to take an interest and have a very curious mind. Um, since 1993, I've been extremely passionate about um, light. Um, I'm going to show you a picture when I was quite young. Um, my parents are, are right there to the left, but um, you can see that I have a twin brother. And interestingly enough, um, there was a major decision that I made uh, when I, uh, to become a designer. Um, my brother also, at the very exact moment that my father asked, also said that he wanted to be an industrial designer. So this was the first time when we, you know, we were highly competitive with each other, but this was the first time that we felt like, no, I think I want to do my thing and you should do your thing. But the fact is we've, we've always been very close and um, you can see <laughs> uh, to this day, he's also working with us uh, on different projects. So, so <clears throat> um, I want to just speak about sort of what led me to the first product. 
So I don't know if you guys have ever read um, and or heard of Dieter Rams. Um, he is a German designer who, I, he's my hero. Um, he actually has or espouses uh, the 10 principles of design for good design. Um, here's a quick book that you guys should all get. So it's essentially um, Dieter Rams as little design as possible. And, you know, as my work has evolved over the years, I've gotten to really learn that following the sort of principles and guidelines that he puts out there uh, about, you know, what makes good design, um, you know, uh, it turns out that a lot of my views about it are very similar to his. And so I highly advise um, that you guys, when you guys get a chance, and there's also a documentary on him called Rams, R-A-M-S, check it out. So here's the beginnings of my very first lighting project, 1993. Um, it started off as sketches and I was looking to do a design that um, emulated, um, you know, a human condition. It was essentially a soft product that was able to be positioned and repositioned at different angles uh, to focus the light in different areas. So at the very early stages, it, it took the, the base of a, of a leather jacket, essentially. And then I started tinkering. Um, this is, you know, I have no, at this point, no idea that at some point I will start a, a, a lighting company. I am just playing. And I, I do want to say something about that, that um, whether you will someday own your business or not, or run your own studio, uh, it is not something you need to know right now. What you must have, though, is curiosity and interest to try to get yourself um, involved in things that you're passionate about. And so here I was developing this product that I had no idea would become a product someday. And here's what it would become. So in 1993, I essentially went to a trade show in New York uh, with some friends of mine who also owned a furniture company. And they essentially allowed me to show off this product. Um, and I'll show you other color versions of it. Um, by having gone to this trade show, and I, in fact, I believe it was ICFF 1993, and I came back with hundreds of orders. So you can imagine, you know, going into this not knowing whether something's going to be well received and so forth. It turns out that um, I was needing to make a decision if I was going to actually start a business or not. And so this actually got me going. Um, what I love and the reason why I like to show this particular design also is because the way it came together um, was I was really not um, knowing exactly what the end result of this design was going to be, but there's a lot of things that happen by accident. And uh, you can see that the, you know, the leather base is essentially tiltable. It's malleable, it's tactile. So I wanted to build a relationship with this object. It had to be kinetic. I wanted to be able to move it in different directions. What was not resolved at the early stages was the shade component. And what was interesting about that is that um, I had a metal sponge shade made that I literally rested it directly on top of the bulb. And as I shifted the lamp back and forth, there was this magic that happened. The shade actually remained in horizontal position. And what I learned from that moment is that going into a, a solution for something, if you allow opportunity to happen for you, uh, then magic can happen. And so this is what happened in, in this instance. So this was the first, um, my first product, and it's actually a part of the uh, permanent collection of the uh, San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. So I had a good start. 
So I'm showing you this. This is representative of our uh, current uh, showroom and also the image on the left um, shows you that, you know, the idea of manufacturing actually involves creating multiplicity of everything you do. So it's not just a one one off object. Our goal is to, you know, produce a product for, you know, many people. Um, we have customers all over the world um, and we, we have many different types of customers. The collaborative process is uh, very important to us. We have about five designers that we work with at all times. Um, this is our studio and we also have about five or six projects going on at one time. So the value of having more than one project going on at one time is that it allows us to be able to, you know, to leave one to then you know, focus on another. And then you have this sort of going, you know, this back and forth that happens that allows, you know, the brain to rest and come back and perhaps see things in a different way later. So it's a, it's a really uh, fun process. A lot of the ideas, um, you know, we sit together um, once a year to decide what we're going to work on um, for the next year. And um, a lot of it is sort of filtering in, um, you know, what opportunities do we see out in the marketplace, but also what are we passionate about? What, what do we feel is really important to add to our lineup that, you know, that adds, you know, innovation, um, you know, that is uh, reflective of our brand. You know, that's been a very interesting sort of learning for me as, as, as we have, you know, provided more product into the marketplace. Um, how does, you know, our brand language maintain its integrity? Um, as you, you know, all probably very familiar, you know, you will all go through prototyping. Um, we do a lot of very simple prototyping in house. Uh, we also, uh, use outside suppliers to provide much more sophisticated levels of prototyping. And of course, like most offices, we'll, we'll get in, down into the details uh, very thoroughly. This is an example of a product called Swell. Um, this particular collection, uh, we spent a quite a bit of time on. It looks like a fairly you know, traditional form factor, but there's a lot of technical details that are going on in the background. Um, you know, one of the most fun things to get involved in is also uh, the process of production. So, you know, designing the object is actually quite simple. It's the actual implementation of that design into a production level that's really hard. And um, we work a lot with outside suppliers as well. Um, it allows us to sort of maintain a, sort of a broad, um, you know, offerings on the different kinds of production um, and materials and processes that we use. So if we were a vertically integrated company that produced everything in house, we would be quite limited. Therefore, we choose to go to outside suppliers to produce all of our different parts. Everything's designed, of course, in-house. Um, this go back to this design called Swell. Um, one of the interesting uh, aspects of this is our interest in sort of taking and, and adding an extra level of innovation that hasn't existed. So we had to create sort of a, uh, a connection point between the fixtures that's completely custom that allows you to essentially link up to 48 lamps together uh, in an indoor outdoor environment. You can see how they are essentially all separate components that can be then linked together. This has been a really successful line for us. And, you know, from the outside, I asked myself, you know, it, I, I think I personally really love this this fixture, but at the same time, if it didn't have that level of technical 
innovation, it would just be another fixture uh, as far as I'm concerned. So our interest is to try to add value as much as where we can um, so that we can have a little bit of a step up um, in a highly competitive landscape. So where do we get our inspiration? Um, I always get that question, you know, designers, of course, are inspired um, by, you know, any outside stimulus. My interest is really to just remain curious as possible. Um, nature, uh, of course, is our, you know, we're lighting people, we're lighting designers. So what is, but a, you know, the absolute best teacher in the world is going to be nature. And so this photo, this uh, image here shows how the light is streaming through an object, right? In this case, a tree, or in the version, the photo on the right, it's one of our fixtures called Solus. And so you can see that there's light transmitting through the object, but what's also, what you're also seeing is how the shape of the light is being, is being reflected through the object. So we're just as responsible for the effect of the light as we are the object. Again, the name is Solus. Um, names are really important. Um, of course, here, solar patterns. Okay, so back to nature. So again, uh, as lighting designers, we're, um, you're, we're interested in both light, but also the absence of light. So it's both those worlds combined that create the full experience of light. Here is a, a lamp called Circa, um, where we've been able to, you know, essentially use technology and use, um, you know, the ability to sort of flatten the, per, the, the profile of light, it's essentially. So we're, you know, the traditional light source or the traditional shade, what did it used to do? You would, you would have a regular, you know, Edison bulb and you would need to shade it, right? So new technology has allowed us to, to, to essentially completely revisit, re, recontextualize um, what uh, the light, um, you know, uh, the, the structure of light can be, in this case, very low profile. Materials are also incredibly important. How we think about the application of materials, uh, you know, what's the most appropriate use of materials? This is one of our Elise lamps. Um, this fixture actually was originally launched 20 years ago. Um, one thing I've neglected to mention that it's what's in, very important for us as a company is that um, when we launch a product, we expect it to have a 10, 15, 20 year life. And that is, you know, what we consider to be the most sort of sustainable uh, approach to design is have a long life or design for life. Um, you know, we also work with other designers. I work with other designers. Um, this particular design um, called Clamp um, was presented to us by a Canadian uh, designer who's now a very good friend. Um, of course, we were looking for something in wood uh, because we wanted to sort of have it had a broader sort of um, material palette. And um, we collaborated on this Beautiful design, which you'll, I think I'll be showing you some more images of later. So architecture, uh, I'm sure you guys, you know, architecture is probably the most sort of powerful um, symbol of design that we see on a daily basis. A lot of it, of course, is really bad, but when it's good, it's, it's very inspiring. So I'm, gonna, I'm showing you this particular slide as a lead in. Um, so what I love about this particular piece of architecture is that it is in a sense one with, it, with its surroundings. So, you know, there's a harmony um, there. It's not like an object, it's just literally placed 
on that yard, it is essentially um, transparent in a way. So um, it's unobtrusive. And again, that is very reflective of our work. We want our work to be as unobtrusive as possible that it allows it to integrate into a space. So here is a lamp called um, Contour. Um, so what we've done with this particular design is we have harnessed the light source, again, in a very thin profile that you see up at the top. And the interior of the object is now, you know, essentially an open uh, space so that you can see, you know, I'm going to go back to this slide so you can sort of see the interior coming through. And that's very reflective of, you know, my work and our work is that we're, we, we want things to sort of be very um, sort of pure and, you know, um, humble in a way and honest and not saying, you know, I'm designed. Uh, we want this to sort of be an object that, that again, lives and coexists in that environment. Um, I'm going to show you what else you can do with this interior. So we call this an interior, like it would be an interior of a home. Um, but we're, we're also interested in this idea of having um, opportunities to, to provide options for our customers. And so, you know, wood, um, fabrics, and so forth. Um, but it's also a technology product. So you can rest your phone and charge it. Um, we are working on a version that uh, you can literally rest your devices and it will charge via induction. Of course, the lamp can become a, uh, a temple for your beautiful personal items, flowers, books, and, you know, technology. So, you know, what I've learned as a designer uh, over time, you know, I'm a designer, but I also have the luxury of being a, a manufacturer, is that what I've learned is that if I can create an, a, a, a design that can um, be a, essentially a component part a, a solution, I'm gonna show you this slide, I'll kind of tell it all. So the way we like to think about design is it's, it's plug and play. That means that when you design a, uh, an object, it can, that all those separate com components can become part of a system. Um, and each one of those components can also give you opportunities to have multiple finishes, for example, um, presented here on the right. Um, this lamp, um, by the way, was designed with my twin brother. Um, you can see that the, uh, there's, a, there's a symmetricality to the design. Um, the, the head and the base are quite similar to each other. And it wasn't until maybe, you know, two, two years after I was selling this design that somebody actually asked me, do you realize that if you did that with your twin brother, why that makes sense? So I thought that was why. why? I couldn't believe that that was such an insightful <laughs> um, comment that. Okay. So we're really interested in kinetic. We're interested in movement. Um, lighting should be completely within our control and our ability to focus the light where you need it. So this is why this design is so flexible. It's almost like a tool, essentially. Here is another sort of plug and play um, collection that we've done. Um, you can see that there's 12, 13 parts here. With those 12 and 13 components, we can create any number of applications. So this is Circa, which you saw a little bit of an image earlier um, that 
essentially is a very interactive object because the shade is tiltable in all directions. It's really fun to interact with. And then you have a seat as a floor. Here it is as a wall version and also as a pendant. But what's unique about the pendant especially is that you typically don't see pendant lamps that are adjustable like this. The same design can be applied to um, flush mount solutions for, you know, hallways and so forth. Of course, they can be hung as chandeliers. And then the photo on the right, again, uh, is just a, our conviction that, you know, we really love the sort of the interaction with the object. So a lot of our um, customers, we have a very large uh, partner. It's like a Herman Miller type company, but their name is called Hayworth. Uh, we work a lot with Hayworth. Um, they're a contract office firm. And in the past few years, we've uh, dedicated a lot of our um, portfolio to work lights, essentially. So a work light should, uh, in today's environment, work extremely well with other technical tools that we have available. We're always working with laptops, monitor screens, and so forth. So this design here is called Superlight. Um, ultra slim, ultra sort of um, unobstru unobtrusive. The whole design objective here was to try to capture the light source in as small a tube as possible. And then that tube essentially is adjustable so that you can um, twist that arm and focus the light forward and backwards. And of course, uh, the articulation of the, of the actual arm itself is pretty much in every possible direction. Um, you can also see the colored tiles there. Um, so we ship um, five colors of those tiles with every single lamp so that the so that the user can, you know, personalize it for themselves. Um, five years ago, we embarked on this really interesting new uh, sort of challenge, a new space for us, which was the, which was um, the realization that the office environment um, was becoming much more open plan. Um, you know, new ways of working. There's no partitions in between us. And, um, you know, um, this is, has been pretty much sort of taken over as the new way of working. Um, we, what we realized is that privacy had gone away. So we introduced this uh, lamp. So here's the starting point of the lamp, which we also offer as just a lamp that can be combined with a panel. And a panel offers then privacy. It, it provides also acoustical um, benefits as well as um, helping charge your devices. So it's a three-in-one solution and um, it's called Corner Office. Uh, we've, we've actually, um, as of recently with the pandemic, um, have been also asked to see if we would be interested in getting into, I'm gonna show you, um, Sorry, just to finish off with these particular slides, you can see that it also works in shared uh, workplace solutions here. You can combine the panels to, to create clusters. So that same design, um, we are now offering in a completely sort of translucent solution. And the demand there is to, to make the offices more safe for the current COVID environment. And so here we are offering, um, you know, a, an, an acrylic, a frosted acrylic solution. What's, what's really uh, quite beautiful about this is that, I mean, we could have gone with something very sterile, um, but what was really important is that the frosted uh, aspect was, was still uh, important for us is to maintain that privacy. And also it 
does a beautiful job of sort of picking up the, the light effect. So essentially the entire panel becomes a light in and of itself. So that was a pretty exciting result. So ambient lighting is um, <clears throat> a very sort of big part of what we do. So ambient lighting essentially is the background lighting, the light that surrounds us. Uh, it is the opposite of a focused light source. It is more of a, um, a soft, um, um, it builds the sort of the feel of a space. So I'm gonna show you sort of a, a, a fairly new project that we started uh, about a year ago called Bola. And Bola, of course, in Spanish is, means sphere or ball. So <clears throat> again, a systemic um, design um, you can see at the top of this, um, you, you'll see that there's, um, there's a light source behind that sort of grill. And um, there's a, a lot that has gone into this particular design to make it really technically advanced. So as, as a starting point, it looks pretty simple. Um, when you start getting into other solutions, um, we're, we're now adding uh, different uh, or Bola is, is essentially a multi-shaded um, design solution. So we have many different hats. This is a disc hat, completely uh, mirror chromated finishes in brass and um, rose gold and um, gun metal. It's become one of our most popular uh, designs as of late. But you can see that you can also group them together in different ways. And again, how do we create a system with a design? Here again, flush mount solutions that you know you would never think of of you know combining um, different sizes, perhaps different finishes to create these um, sort of interconnectable um, flush mount solutions. And then from the pendant, we, we go to a, a, a freestanding table model. So, you know, um, after I designed this particular um, solution here, I, I, I couldn't bother but thinking how that, that particular design here reflected the original design. So um, again, the idea of sort of carrying a thread through the entire lineup is, is really important to us and it just reinforces the philosophy, very elemental. That shade, by the way, can be rotated 360 degrees, and it it can also uh, it also literally comes apart in components. The bola line now uh, uh, taken to this more acoustic space, so um, you know what sort of inspired this particular uh, version is a, you know a very sort of alluring. Um, French ladies hat is how I sort of see it. And this particular shade um, literally rests right on top of the globe and it can be articulated in uh, many different directions. We have a lot of different sizes on this one too. Uh, as small as um, 18 inches all the way up to uh, 52 inches. Again, acoustical. So um, acoustical lighting is a really uh, uh, interesting space these days because, um, you know, people are again working in, um, you know, I mean, obviously this is a residential product, but it's also uh, designed for corporate interiors. And they are looking for ways to uh, dampen the noise. And so this is a decorative way of doing that.
and then taking it on to other materials like like wood. Just very elegant. And then here is another variation. Um, you know, nothing wrong uh, when an object can can also take uh, a very sort of jewelry esque feel. Um, you know, uh, when I first came up with this variation, I I was almost feeling like, isn't this a little bit too decorative? But at the same time, there's nothing wrong with beauty and uh, bringing in, you know, um, elements of jewelry and and you know other things that sort of command our our uh, that that bring other images, uh, you know, that that have this sort of premium feel. Variation on, on a theme table version. Okay, so I'll go back to this one. So um, this is a lamp called Elise. Um, we essentially, again, are, are taking advantage of the technology where um, what's going on uh, here in the, this very thin profile is a light technology uh, called flat panel light technology. So that's why we're able to sort of capture the light source in a very thin profile. And that allows us to, to essentially come up with sort of new iconography for light source. Um, here they are in multiple finishes. Uh, you can see here that the cord actually uh, can retract completely. Oops, the cord can retract completely into uh, the body. So you literally just push this little um, uh, button at the top and it allows you to pull the cord out and level, you know, bring it to the, to the level that you need it. And you can retract it back in if you need, so, you need to do so. Just an application. So this is a new, um, you know, uh, collaboration. Uh, with a New York designer, um, Brad Ascalon, who actually approached us with um, with this a particular design that sort of combines, um, you know, the uh, very sort of furniture esque combination of craft, and um, we we really thought that this was a, a design language that fit us very well, and we love, you know, this whole idea of being able to sort of hang it um, in very orderly ways like this, almost like links. This, this lamp is called Belmont. We have them in a couple of different sizes in the suspension, but we're also moving to table models, which are launching uh, later this year. And you can see we're also offering things like charging and so forth. Those, those are like natural built-in things now with almost all of our lighting. If, it's, if we can add value for integrating uh, other people's technologies with our, with our own, we, we, take that, we take advantage of that whenever we can. Here's the floor standing. Okay. So speaking of the multitask, so what, what re we regard uh, as multitask lighting is when we're hybridizing um, a light with another level of utility. So I'm going to show you a new kind of product line that we're developing right now that's going to be launched very soon. Um, it has been presented to the world, so you're not the first ones to see it for the first time. Um, so this particular design is called Tile, and Tile is essentially shares a, a charging uh, base solution with multiple materials that allow you to dress it up as you like, um, but the, the actual light source itself can be this posted lamp here, or it can be more of an articulating task light. And you can also see that we've integrated sort of fabric and other types of materials so that we're really customizing it for the user.
and then um, <clears throat> kind of on that family, uh, we're, we've come up with a, uh, a much more sort of compact task light that allows you to, again, charge your devices uh, via wirelessly. Um, the head rotates 360 degrees, uh, the post rotates 360 degrees as well. So we're just launching this particular lamp called Talia uh, in about a month. We're very excited about it. This is actually gonna be our lowest cost um, task lamp. And it's also available on the floor standing. You can see that we're also looking at different sort of finishes on the post. So we're really trying to bring up the premium feel. Here it is in context. And there's a floor version. So um, I'm gonna just take a drink of water here. 10 minutes, okay. I'll hurry through this. So um, last year we um, decided to um, sort of build on this sort of idea of how can uh, a lighting a pendant collection, a pendant uh, lighting collection, uh, become part of a system. And I'm going to start with this. So this is the basic element. Um, very minimal post um, with a, a light source that projects light up and down. So this is the innovation is that it's actually an up light and a down light. And so we weren't happy to just live with this because the whole idea of it being an up light is that it can also uh, invite reflectors uh, and reflectors of different materials. So in this case, um, we're doing uh, a domed reflector in wood, but we're also doing it in metal. And I'll just walk you through this. So <clears throat> the uplight component here is that it's, it's in a sense, um, you know, paying homage to materiality. Um, but as well, it's doing a really nice job of reflecting some of the, that light back down. And um, you can sort of see it in context here. It has uh, almost like an air balloon kind of quality to it. I, I love the lightness of it. And that, that shade can actually be uh, slid up and down to find your you know, your desired um, height for the, for the actual shade itself. Um, another variation is an acoustical panel. So this, we're very excited about this because our corporate interiors uh, are really looking for, again, this type of acoustical benefit in their lighting. And this one is called um, Sky Sound, or the previous one is called Sky Dome. Here it is an application. All right. So um, one of the more exciting areas that, that um, we dabbled in to uh, a few years ago, I would say five years ago, was this idea of a social light. And what is a social light? So for me, a social light is, an, is a light source that brings people together. Um, that uh, invites uh, interaction with people, invites interaction with the object. And um, we're also taking advantage of how do you get out into free space uh, and not be tethered to a wire? Well, um, battery technology has gotten to a point where we're, um, we're really in a great new space um, that allows us to have a, a, a light source that's, you know, rechargeable with a battery um, that can last uh, many, many hours. So, oops. So, UMA 
was our first uh, lantern um, that we designed. And uh, we weren't satisfied with the fact that it was just the light source. We also thought, how can we per perhaps integrate um, sound into this object? So it was a brand new territory for us. Uh, it was literally a four year development cycle uh, to learn how to design something with acoustics um, and uh, sound, uh, whole new territory. Um, I could spend hours talking to you about the challenges of designing something that integrates, um, you know, that creates a, a sound chamber uh, for a speaker that also works well for the light source. But it was extremely challenging, but it has been incredibly uh, uh, well-received. Um, the design is really simple looking on the outside, but extremely complex on the inside. Uh, that's one of the things that I also feel is critically important for good design, is that uh, in the end, the object has to look uh, simple to use. Um, it has to be honest, um, and it has to be, you know, in a sense, uh, extremely utilitarian. When you put all those things together in harmony, that's when I think you can achieve beauty. That's how you're controlling the uh, volume here. Okay. And you can take it anywhere with you. Just recently, we uh, just launched a mini, a mini version, which I, I would, not having too many slides, I, I decided not to include it, but there's a, a smaller version of this one that you can link up to um, 24 units together and, and play them in a very large sort of environment for restaurants and outdoor settings. So I think that this particular object has been our strongest sort of response from, from, from people because again, it's, it's emotive. It, it really brings out the sort of sense of that, you know, the color of the light is, is emulates, um, you know, the color of a flame and fire and warmth and, you know, how humans have evolved over eons. This is the kind of light that we respond to. Ah, uh, there's, there is the small Uma. Okay, so um, most recently, this is our latest object, which I actually will also show it to you in person. Um, so this is our last um, product in the slide show here. Um, this is called Kendell. So Kendell is um, strictly a light source. Um, it is fully rechargeable, um, up to 100 hours battery life. Um, it's intended for use uh, in, you know, homes, restaurants, outdoors, perhaps as pathway finding. You can use it as a flashlight. And the, you know, I can show you. <clears throat> so <clears throat> what you're looking at here is a prototype. Um, we're, we're literally going to be launching this in about three months. Um, but what's cool is that, you know, basically you just tap to go through five different levels, but you can also press and hold and it goes through a, a complete up and, you know, 100% down to 10%. And I'm very happy with the way this one's coming. Okay, so this is the line and um, in, Actually, this is about 50% of the line. We have about 50 products now um, since 1993. I want to just say that 85% of those collections uh, are still around um, for over 20, 25 years. So we're really proud of that. And that's, that's kind of our, our sort of drive is to, again, try to create as timeless a solution as possible. 
Um, that's, that's in our best interest, but it's also in the best interest of the environment and humanity in general. And, um, you know, let's see how we can sort of add uh, beauty to the world, but also be very thoughtful about how sustainable we are about it. Um, if we have time, so here's a slide that shows a lot of our collaborators. These are incredibly talented, important people, uh, some of which have brought uh, their own vision to the company. And, uh, you know, we work on a, on a licensing basis with them. Uh, they provide, you know, their time, um, their perspective. And um, it's allowed me to uh, be able to um, bring sort of a broader, um, you know, palette of ideas uh, as a collective. And um, all of these people are good friends of mine, too. Hi, Pablo. So I think we're actually going to jump over into the Q&A oh, no now. Problem. First question we have, what qualities do you think are most important to building a successful design company? Okay, very good question. I ask myself that question every day. Um, I think um, persistence, um, I think, is probably the, the most necessary uh, quality to have because you're going to be facing obstacles on a daily basis. Um, your ability to collaborate um, is critically important because uh, in order to build something strong, um, it requires people. And your ability to communicate uh, and also, you know, uh, set the tone and leadership um, for those folks to contribute is really important. I think it's also very important to have an, have your um, have your strong opinions about things. You might be right sometimes, you might be wrong sometimes, but it, it's important that you're open to making mistakes. And um, I make them every day. I think we learn a great deal from our mistakes. And um, maybe the most important, be curious. Because with curiosity, uh, it takes you out of your own element and you are in search of ways of improving yourself and looking and seeing how else can we uh, sort of, you know, what other perspectives can we bring in? Yeah. Absolutely. As students, do you think it's more important to focus on the aesthetic, the storytelling, performance, or a design that's manufacturing friendly and ready? The highest level, I think, is to be able to achieve all those together in harmony. I don't think that either one of those is mutually exclusive. What I've learned as a, you know, as a designer who's also a manufacturer is that, you know, one doesn't work without the other. They must be working together in sync. And it, it only tells us that, um, you know, yes, there are certain things that are more important than others. Um, but in the end, it all has to work, um, you know, in harmony. Uh, Dieter Rams will tell you that. Um, you know, I, I believe that, you know, the most important thing to consider is that, um, you know, look at nature. Nature is, has survived because it, it's been able to, uh, you know, in a sense, coexist. And if you're not able to coexist, you're going to be, you're not going to survive. And your, your ability to sort of be open to um, everything that's around you, including obstacles, including whether, you know, I should focus on design versus, you know, production. It all comes together um, when you can put it all together. Absolutely. It seems that there's a lot of engineering involved in the products, especially the BOLA series that you shared. Can you speak about that process and how it informs production? Sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I have to say, if it wasn't for maybe 25 years of experience now behind me um, and working with sort of light technology, 
um, I don't think that product could have been possible. Um, the, the most challenging uh, aspect about that <clears throat> particular product is that a lot of the engineering is happening on the inside. And so the things to be looking out for are, um, you know, even though we're using LEDs, for example, which are uh, at this point, um, the a mainstay in our uh, civilization, LEDs uh, use very little energy. Um, they are also um, now providing very high quality uh, light, but they, stu they still do create heat. And so you have to be able to uh, create a design that, that can dissipate that heat. And so there was a lot of obstacles with that particular design. Um, we, we just also um, were lucky enough to partner with some good, very good suppliers that, that um, were able to help us get it to, to a production level. That's great. Have you studied light in an academic setting or just through your experiences as a designer and being a curious person? You know, I read up, um, I read up on light on a daily basis. It's very hard to keep up with um, what's happening with light technology. Um, my, my love really is to experience it. And, and uh, so, um, you know, I have, I have a few designers and when they start out with us, they love their um, monitor screens and they love their, you know, working on a computer, right? That's a tool. Um, but I also have to reinforce that you must go out and build a model, experience the light, uh, figure out how, um, you know, light is reflecting off of an object. Um, you know, it's, it's here. Uh, you have to be able to feel the light. And, and so you have to be able to experience it. it. You'll never be able to read from a book that aspect. It's, it's really coming down to the experience of it. And that's really when you can then uh, create uh, a great solution is because you understand um, that, that ability to control the light and also how it makes people feel under that light. Absolutely. How do you take care of the technical issues of using electricity in your products? Do you have an in-house engineer? Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, we have, first of all, we have, um, we have had engineers in-house. We have, uh, I would say, very technically savvy designers now. And we, uh, we, we do sort of depend a lot on our suppliers as well, who are building the, the actual products for us for, for their, you know, for testing them properly. We do a lot of testing in-house, but uh, our factories also uh, do a lot of testing for us. So that, that combination of using, you know, our sort of engineering expertise with, with their engineering expertise, it's a good combination. What I've learned also is when you, if you do have a full-time engineer in house, what will tend to happen is that you may uh, design something from the ground up and then you give it to a factory. Many times I find that problematic because it's, much better when the actual factory or the supplier is, is the maker is going to be part of that um, from the early stages so that you can both be driving towards what we want and what they want or what they need um, in order to, to, to have it be producible and producible, you know, cost effectively and, all, and, and, and for other reasons. Absolutely, that certainly makes sense. Unfortunately, we are out of time for today. I'm sorry we weren't able to get to everyone's amazing questions that were submitted. Uh, but I do have one final question for you, Pablo. Any last words of advice or wisdom that you'd like to leave with the students tuning in today? Yeah, sure. Well, <clears throat> it's, it's pretty amazing what humanity is kind of going through right now. Um, I ask myself every day, um, I think uh, everybody who's in a creative space right now is asking, you know, what can we do that will make a difference in the world? Um, and I think that uh, this is a good time to be asking yourself, you know, um, I think design, first of all, is an amazing uh, space 
to be able to contribute to humanity right now and finding things that are, you know, solution based that make a difference for, for people um, that add value to the world. Um, and so, you know, um, every day we're, uh, you know, it, um, it, I'm reinforced by the fact that I think we're continuing to do really good work that, that matters over an extended period of time, but it's going to make me a better designer. And I want to also just, you know, inspire people to do the same. So. Yeah, that's a great advice. Paulo, I want to say a huge thank you for taking the time to come on today and give such an insightful presentation and, and look at the world of Pablo Designs. Students, I want to say thank you for tuning in today. If you'd like to learn more about Pablo Designs, you can visit their website, pablodesigns.com, or their Instagram at pablodesignssf. If you'd like to learn more about the Original Americas, you can visit our website, theoriginalamericas.com, or our Instagram at theoriginalusa. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.